Hey everyone, welcome back to the YouTube live event. This is workshop four in week three. It's been absolutely insane. I've been stood up now for the last three hours and I'm excited to carry on going. Um, obviously, as you can see, we have James here and James is incredible when it comes to selling in the DMs. Now, before we get into James and his expertise, I want to just pre-frame this a little bit. Um, this is crucial. Like, if I was in a live room, I'd be like, put your hand up if you hate being on a sales call. And everybody's hand would go up. They hate it. They feel uncomfortable. They don't really know how to portray it. And then it's like, right, okay, who would rather just sell in the DMs and still close your three to 5K deals? And I'd ask everyone's hands to go up and what would happen? Everyone would be like, fucking me. Um, and it is actually possible it, over the last few years, it is actually possible. Don't get me wrong, it's still a skill. And that is what we are going to learn today. Talk to me. How's it going, How dude? <laughs> yeah, good, man. How are you? Good, mate. Yeah, full of energy still. I'm still pumping, mate. I'm still going. I am loving it, mate. Whereabouts are you located? I'm in South End, though. South End. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Nice. Well, that's South East. So, probably, what, three, three, four hours kind of drive from you, I'd imagine. Yeah, so I used to live in I used to live in Kent and Ashford. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, and um, so I know roughly that that area. Um, yeah, not far away. No, no, oh, not really. Yeah. Imagine how, how much I stood out. <laughs> yeah. <I know> <laughs> so James, talk to me. Why did why is DM selling become so such a thing, such a crucial thing now? Like it's, I guess, like for me, like my own personal perspective of it is probably slightly different from other people. So, when I was like, I'm 36 now. When I was 18, I started in uh, call centers. So, like, I started like dialing numbers on call centers. And back then, like, there was no like real rules or regulations when it came to phone calls. Like, you could literally pick up the phone book and actually start dialing numbers. And we had like a whole bunch of different clients that we would do it for. And when I first started like doing cold calling, like I hated it. Like I remember first lunchtime I had, I was like phoning up my best mate. I was like, look, this is this is horrendous. I've got to get myself out of it. But <laughs> fortunately, like I needed to because I was in a band at the time, like we would tour around the UK and like I needed a job where basically I could earn money, go away and tour, and then come back and continue to earn money. And like with call centers, if you were doing well you could have that like opportunity to go and do that. So I was like, right, I'm, I'm going to make this work for me, like because of the band. So I started getting like sales and like I started, of course I was doing it for the band, but then like after a while I started like just getting into the psychology of speaking to people. And I'd go to like the library, get like books and like I download uh, like not broadband, but I download like on dial up. It took like three and a half weeks to download like a, a like an audio like uh, CD of like how to sell like uh, over the phone. But anyway, I got, I got like really into it. And then I came off the phones for a bit. I started managing staff like and coaching people. And then I like did some business development in the, in the call center, you know, phoning up businesses and getting people on. And all through this, I was just developing my skill set of how to talk to people and how to get them to purchase things, how to get them to like me and purchase things. And then it came to a point where I was running the call center as well. So I was running the, the whole call center from like every little piece of, of the call center. And I loved like, I, I didn't love like talking to clients like the, um, you know, the admin part and stuff like that, but the selling stuff, like loved it. And over the years, I developed like a structure and a framework of like, how to speak to people like you don't know and turn those people into customers. And I started affiliate marketing in 2016. And this is probably where it's probably a little bit controversial in many respects, because like in 2016, man, like I was basically told to like leave all of that knowledge and experience like to one side and put all your focus into funnels, put all your focus into emails. Like a, a lot of them are done for you emails, you know, automated funnels and, and those kind of things. And I didn't really realize it at the time, but like all of those things are essentially designed to automate communication, you know, sales pages, funnels, done for you emails. I didn't see it like that. At, 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 at first, I, I saw it as, wow, I'm getting all of this help for me to like, now I just got to drive traffic and all of this stuff automates that communication for me. I was like, great. And I'm not saying that stuff doesn't work. 
But I'm saying as a beginner affiliate marketer, it put me in a frame of mind where I thought all of that stuff was going to do the work for me. And I remember you kind of talking about just a skill set um, just early, man. Like, it is all about that skill set. Mm-hmm. And I lacked that skill set until 2019 when the company I was working for went under. And at that point, I like needed to make money online. And for three years prior, I was just struggling with like going from one thing to the next to the next, not focusing on direct messaging or anything like that. So I was like, okay, what is my skill set? Selling to people one on one. I was like, how can I do that online through direct messaging? And I just started speaking to people through direct messaging. I transferred over all of that framework from the call center and I started doing it. And just to go now, bring it back into your question, Brian, like I think there was a lot of people who are doing similar things, but I think people are coming into this place online now where they're really seeking humanization and leadership. And they're probably staying a little bit more clear of like those things that are like automating that communication because they're becoming a little bit more wise to it. It's just that a lot of people don't know how to effectively speak to people they don't know and bring those people and turn those people into high ticket sales. And, Fortunately, I've had that experience in the offline world, bought it online, and then over the like the last three years, you know, really honed it and refined it and you know improved upon it. But I think it's a great, I think it's a, a really attractive methodology for people to move into because it's like, okay, you're cutting to the source, you're speaking to people, you're speaking to your traffic. But in regards to like getting people to a place where they're like, all oh, right, I understand how to do this properly. I think that's the big piece that people are lacking, which is where, which is why I've angled my business into that whole expertise, because I, I feel like that's the, the the biggest methodology and the the, the probably the lowest skill set level that's out there right now in the industry, if that makes sense, man. Yeah, yeah. So we were laughing at the joke, weren't we, just, just before we come on about like, obviously how like, you literally you, you can jump in and you basically get pitched literally on the first message. Um, I, I likened it to you wouldn't go to you wouldn't go to a, a girl in a bar and go, hey, I love, do you want to go back to my for sex? You would get a slap, you'd get a drink thrown at you. Yet the minute people come behind this thing called a keyboard, they seem to forget the process that it actually requires to get a yes. Like mm. they, just, they just become keyboard warriors, don't they? And yeah. they just become absolute lemons is possibly like the only way to describe it. It's not their fault because they don't know how to do it when they start. It is their fault if they watch this and still bloody do it though. Um, so like, how do you, because don't get me wrong, like, I, I don't like appointment setting. Um, it's one of the things I'm like, oh, best get your numbers in, best get your numbers in. Um, I am very much like an automated person. I, I love automation. Um, I remember like on one of my podcast episodes, we were talking about automation that much. I actually, when I was back in corporate, automated my full week to four hours on a Monday. It was like, and I used to sit there and start building my own online business at that stage. Um, that's how much I'm like, I'm such a geek for it. So like when it's like, oh, come on, into the DMs, like start talking to people. Don't get me wrong, I'm a sociable guy. It's just, I've got that resistance. Um, so for someone like me, like how would you get people past that resistance to actually start adding somebody, hey, how you doing? Like, how would you get people to start breaking that barrier? Because you said yourself, you hated online or phone call sales, like call centers when you first started. So how do people get past that to go, actually, it's it's not that bad and it's yeah. enjoyable? It's a, yeah, good question, man. I, I think like, I guess from my perspective, like in the call center, like I needed to, rock that out because I didn't have any money like for, and that thing was paying me money. Otherwise I couldn't do it. So like my need and my reason were, were pretty strong in the online world. You know, there's many different methodologies that work and I can understand why people do those things. I think like for me, the biggest problem I find online for struggling affiliate marketers who not getting results is there's a real approach of, like, and this is like, because I love these conversations, man, because you're very much on the other side of things, but you're also like, you're not like cut off to anything. It's just like you want to learn and like set vice versa and stuff. But like, I find a lot of affiliates when they first start out, they move into a program, they get taught an, an approach and then they become like minions of that approach. 
And like their, their whole thing is like, it's very much content first. And like, if you look on like a, a platform like Facebook, you go through your newsfeed, you know, the thing that I really struggle with with people is like, I'm looking at content and I'm seeing people go, say the same type of value post, the same type of stories, like, and everything is the same. It's the same opinions. It's the same themes. It's the same topics. It's the same bold headlines at the beginning. Everything is the same. So like when people talk about standing out from the crowd, it can be very difficult for struggling affiliate marketers to stand out from the crowd because they're saying the same stuff as everyone else. But like when you really peel back the layer, they've also been given post templates. When they go into direct messaging, they've been given scripts. And suddenly for an audience, it's like you're a carbon copy of this person and this person. Yeah, maybe that person's got a, a clever little nuance or a clever little gimmick to a certain topic or theme. But like ultimately, when I look at it, everyone's the same, like in many respects. Of course, there's exceptions to that. And there's people who do break out of that mold. But like when I look at direct messaging, I don't focus on scripts. I focus just on, look, I'm not going to ask you to put content out. When I first start working with someone, for me, it's not about them putting content out and you know waiting for engagement to then bring into direct mm. messaging. For me, my, my mentality is when we started off the call center, we weren't waiting for the phone to ring. You know, we weren't. Just, we didn't just set everything up, do all like the the walls and the chairs and everything, and just sat down and wait for the phone to ring. We got the phone book out and started dialing numbers because our business was at zero. We needed to make money. Mm. So, like for me, it's a more of a mentality piece where it's like, okay, well, if you're at zero and you 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 think in your business the best thing to do is what everyone else is doing in the same way without developing a true skill set, well, then for me, I'd say you need to be focusing on speaking more directly to your traffic, understanding the structure of a conversation to go from someone who don't know you to turning that person into a hot lead and a high ticket customer. And like that for me is like one of the most valuable skill sets you can create because that is the most sought after skill set you can bring into your business. And like when you think about it as an affiliate, well, you, you wear many different hats, right? You're, you're the director, you're the owner, you're the HR person, the admin person, the social media person, but you're the sales person. And like too much, I think, has gone too much in a direction of building, like building relationships. Like people only see building relationships as like, you know, just you know, t- take your time and like that long-term strategy and like building relationships all about sharing value. It's like, okay, like for, for me... I've got a different perception of what value is. And for me, if a business is at zero dollars, I think we've got to like man it up and act as if we're on zero dollars and do more. Like, and doing more is like, instead of waiting for people to come into your world, go out there, make connections. Once you know what you're doing, you can talk to anyone and you can bring that person into a great conversation about what you're offering. But it's just about learning that skill set. If, if that's if, if some, somehow answered your question, bro. <laughs> I, I love how it's like, and I, and this is this is crucial because I've had to like in my life I've had to go back to this a few times, um, and like you mentioned obviously as an affiliate marketer or as an online business owner you have many different hats. Yes, so eventually those hats are supposed to be filled by another human being. Mm. Right now, the one hat that fuels every other hat is sales. Because if you don't get those sales, you can't put that hat on someone else. You can't do it. So that focus on if you are at zero, you have to make money. And obviously, one of the – it's hunting. You have to go on and hunt. Um, and you have to go and talk to people. You like Because as you say, you don't sit there. Nobody, no business owner just sits there, like successful business owner, sits there and waits for the phone to ring. Yeah. Like As you say, there's content strategies, but obviously – especially on Facebook, if you're producing the same value post, you're producing the same bait post, you're producing the same type of story, like thing, because we've all copied them off somebody else. Um, like even from a sales point of view, when when I used to like book myself on sales calls or strategy calls and they'd ask a couple of questions and, I, and, and I'd answer it. I remember perfectly like once I answered the question and I asked his next question for him because he was using the Sam Oven sales script. And I knew it off by art because I was a closer. I was yeah. like, and, I, and he was like, uh, I was like, should we just put the scripts down and have a conversation? And <laughs> yeah. he just didn't know what to do. He was like, um, I was like, come on. I was like, put it down. Like, talk to me. I'm yeah. a human. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, people can't, like, they see scripts is the easy way, but the scripts is only put on a plaster over the problem. 
it's your okay. skill set that you need to improve on. And mm -hmm. actually, I like the way you're like, right, okay, business on zero, which means you've got all of the hats, but there's only one hat that matters right now. Like, does your business need money to survive? Yes, it fucking does. Right, okay. Put every other hat down, put your sales hat on, be a big boy, and go get some go get some cash. Like, yeah. how would you start that process? Right, okay. Business is zero. I've got sweet FA, James. James, what am I going to do? Right, I need to make some money. Hit me. Cool. So my system, like, in terms of how I believe things should happen. And sorry, man, I, I, I kind of, like go back to go forward a little bit like in, in the answer but like <laughs> don't you apologize <laughs> me give me volume <laughs> sure, man. well for me i think one of the big problems is like uh, just talking about this industry and the affiliate marketing industry or make money online industry is that like if i was if i was a gardener you know i could probably do some people's gardens for free and i could probably post about that content and stuff like that and people would be like oh like james is great for doing gardens like because that's what my business is about but like in the make money online realm it's like well results like you have to have generated results and people like that's a big problem like people people feel like in pop like have imposter syndrome massively in this industry mm -hmm. like they feel like a lot of people are doing high ticket they're having to especially at the beginning they haven't generated any results yeah they can leverage other people's results they can talk like it's the best thing since sliced bread but people aren't stupid like people can uh, sense a lack of sincerity you know, but mm. very easy to find information. It's very easy for someone to leverage someone else's results and go to speak to them instead. Like, it's very easy for those things to happen. So, like, when someone's asking someone else to part ways with one thousand, two thousand, three, four, five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars, and they haven't got results, that's such a big problem. So, first and foremost, for me, I think one of the big issues is that people feel like they have to fake it till they make it, and there's many different levels of that. But a lot of it is down to like assuming that what they're invested into or what they're promoting is already generating them cash when it hasn't done. And that's a big, big issue. But I understand why people feel they have to do it because they're stuck but like, but from a rock to a hard place with it because it's like, okay, well, I've got this thing to promote. It's worth X amount of money. I'm speaking to this person in direct messaging. They're asking me questions. What do I do? So for me... I take away the high ticket element for for people. I close the high ticket um, and I put a free offer in place. So like for a struggling affiliate, the aim really is to bring, for a structured conversation, to bring them into a free offer. And when I'm talking about free offer, I'm not talking about a PDF, I'm not talking about an ebook or anything like that. I'm talking about a, a substantially, um, substantially heavy in value uh, free offer that actually focuses on the methodology of the biggest problem that people have online, which is how to get traffic and convert that traffic into customers utilizing direct messaging. So then people who want to start, once they've set up with that, you take out the imposter syndrome because the main thing that's being focused on there is the free offer. You take out any kind of issue with feeling as if like you have to sell anything that's based on a transaction, whether it's $7, 19, 27, 49, like whatever, it's still a transactional based um, issue there. So I take that all away. And on the follow up, there's many different uh, strands of follow up. So many bit different touch points uh, for follow up. And that's when we convert those hot leads into high ticket sales. So really, the focus then is on people becoming master lead generators, as opposed to high ticket affiliates, where nowadays, man, I mean, you've seen it, people in this realm have to focus on content they have to focus on creating their own offer they have to focus then on branding building that reputation they have to focus on getting people on sales calls like so many skill sets that they're having to actually develop dms all of that stuff these people are doing full-time jobs like they're working mm -hmm. like two hours a day like on their business and it's like how is that person able to move in all of those different directions they're not so for someone who's just getting started first of all get your get your structure in your business set up in a way that's like Talk to people on Facebook or any platform that has a direct message functionality. Understand the process of bringing people into a free offer that gives insanely good value so that people look at it and go, okay, if this is for free. I wonder what his paid stuff's going to be like. And then on the, on the follow-up side, that's when we bring people into high ticket conversation. But the people don't like the affiliates or the clients don't need to focus on that front. 
we're the ones who, or I'm the one who, who will close that high ticket sale. So then it's like, okay, how do you do the strategy? Best place for it, like on Facebook, would be Facebook groups. So loads of different Facebook groups, like high ticket marketing, affiliate Facebook groups. Any affiliate marketing group that is a private group that when you look at that group contains good value and has been uh, managed well. Like normally between like over a thousand members in normally over a thousand members. There's there's exceptions to that, like under than that, but like thousand members as, as a minimum. The most simplistic approach: go to the members area, like the members tab. Scroll down to new to the group. Take a little look at everyone's profile. Like not for too long. All we're looking for here is people who are in tier one countries. Typically, there's always exceptions to that rule. Um, and people like when you're looking at their content or you're looking at on their profile, they're people who aren't showcasing results, you know, too much. Like if they're showcasing results for, for an affiliate marketer who's just starting out, like for me, that's a tougher conversation to have. And I, I touch on that later. But to begin with, focus on your lowest hanging fruit. Focus on like the people that you feel you can get into a good conversation with. Add them, drop them a message. So it's like at the same time, add, drop the message. And the, that's when the structure comes into play. And I don't know if you want to talk about that in a bit, but like that structure is like a, a process that came from the call center, implemented online, and it really works at helping cold people turn those people into hot leads, man, without scripts. Because like you say, like scripts was like notorious back in the day in the call center. Mm -hmm. And over over time, we found that like, people actually turned their conversations into like interrogations a little bit. And it was like, question, question, question. And it's like, where's the humanization in all of this? Like, where's the empathy? Like, where, how do you show sincerity if you're always just following words on a script? And online, I think people have gone through this process where they feel like, right, I've just got this script and it's just easy for me to ask these questions. And like, that's how I do it. It's like, that, that ain't, that's no skill set. Anyone can do that. No skill set to that. So, and people aren't stupid anymore. Like, or not saying a word, but like people ain't stupid. Like, people know that it's a script. People know when someone's not listening to them. Like, people know when they're just hearing what someone's saying so that they can just talk about their own thing and advance their own agenda. Mm -hmm. Like, once you develop the skill set and you have a system in place that converts cold to hot, it's like then it comes to the numbers and it's like, okay, well, understand how your business now you put on the hat of like, okay the stats guy in the business. It's like, okay, understand your stats. How many people do you need to speak to to get a lead? How many people, how many leads do you need to turn into a high ticket sale? And then each week you improve upon those stats. And it's like, okay, how do I improve upon those stats? Well, share with me conversations. Let me see your structure of conversation. Let me give you some pointers in terms of what's working well and what you need to improve. And if people are consistent on that, like, and they're disciplined on that, their stats improve, and like stats are great because stats are facts and facts don't care about your feelings. So like, <laughs> when, when, like when you're looking at your stats and it's like, well, I've had 600 conversations. I've got one lead. This doesn't work. It's like, no, nah, it's not that it don't work. It's that you can't take the fact that like, it's hurt your feelings that about that stat. So now let me have a look at five conversations out of that 600. And I'll tell you the bits you're doing really well at and the bits you need to improve upon. And next mm -hmm. week, or next month, let's look at your stats again. And I guarantee you, you implement those bits, the amount of conversations you need to generate one lead will massively change. You'll start generating a better quantity of lead and then a better quality of lead. And you'll start seeing the high ticket combos come in. And all of this, man, is exactly how I ran the call center. Um, just through stats, just it's a very cold, direct strategy, all about skill set, all about sales skills. Um, a lot of like motivation and like pumping people up for it, but like, <laughs> like a awful it. Wall Street montage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pick off that fucking fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So obviously, like, as you say, like the stats don't lie. Obviously, it, and using those stats to leverage, obviously, the, the certain parts in that, like, how many people, how many conversations did, or how many friends did you add? How many conversations like replied? Um, obviously, what stage did you get to? Did you present an offer? Did you present the free thing? Like, and obviously, all of that is like right, ding, 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 and you'll be able to see like obviously where where the problem is on that stat or because of those stats. Like, 
that structure, that framework um, that gets them from add a friend, that initial conversation all the way through, what does that structure look like? Yeah. Uh, so start. I, everything I do is like, I just think, always think back to the offline world. So it's like, first of all, like when people say like, hey, how are you? Like it's very, very common way of greeting someone. Like for me, it's very similar. It's just a break the ice. Uh, but a break the ice is just a break the ice message is a message where you're focusing the start of the conversation on something that's related to the end goal. So as an example, you just want to find some common ground. Like I know like if you've a partner, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, like whatever, like people will resonate with when you first start meeting someone, when you, that, that first conversation isn't the same conversation that you're having in today, in today's mm-hmm. world, you're having it like, all right, do you like films? Like, yeah, I like films. Like, do you like music? Like, yeah, like, like it's very basic, like, if we're being honest. Like, mm-hmm. so when you think back to, like, people who drop me- their first message is like, hi, my name's James, and I used to, like, run a call centre for, like, 20 years, and then, like, now I'm doing this. Like, And it's like, here's a link. It's like, whoa, you're asking this person to marry you, like, mm-hmm. straight away. And it's like, you need to find common ground first. You need to take it, take it slow, because that would never work in the offline world. So don't think it's just suddenly going to work online. Just because tra- people talk about traffic, and I talk about traffic like it's numbers. End of the day, traffic is human beings. Like So p- how people work offline is actually the same as how they do it online. You just need to transfer your approach in the same way online. So um, we have like a break the ice message, really simple message. And it often goes something along the lines of, uh, hey, Brian, just seen you are one of my suggested friends. Uh, take it that means you're a fellow affiliate marketer too. That gets between 30 to 40% response rate. Um, some people are getting like 50, 60, even 70% response rate. The optimal is where you want to be is between 30 to 40%. And like at, at that point, I always just like to make reference to people who like look at like the email marketing, like email marketing, some like on an average in the industry is very low, like can be like between 17 to 20%, even, even lower, depending on the type of traffic that's being utilized. So we're essentially doubling that through a response rate for messaging, which is great. And then the second phase, so it's break the ice. Second phase is build rapport. Uh, and building rapport is just building rapport about the thing that you've just but just created a common ground about. Same way, oh, I, like, I like films. Next question would be like, what, what's your favorite film? You know, it's just, it's basic, but it's like information that's really useful to know. Next phase after that's uncovering the struggle. And we do that typically for a really unbiased question. Like people make the mistake sometimes of assuming that people have a struggle. Like they'll say stuff like, so what's your, what's your biggest struggle right now? What's your biggest challenge right now? Um, like that's very, like at, fir- at the first time you ask that question, it's very assumptive to the fact that someone's got a struggle. And that actually puts people's backs up more than it doesn't because they're coming into a conversation going, okay, well, you're showcasing your own agenda here that you assume that I've got a struggle. So we like the first time we talk about that, we, we actually talk about it completely unbiasedly. And what I mean by unbiasedly, I'm like a, com- a question that says, how's it going so far? Like that's very unbiased. It's not like one way or the, or the next. And we find that if people are ready to give the struggle out there, they will do because it shows that they're at the right time to share that struggle. Regardless, they then move into the next phase, which is probing and understanding. So probing either that struggle or probing what they're doing online, probing the methodology of what they uh, use for traffic and converting that traffic into customers. Understanding at that point what their biggest challenge would be doing what they're doing if we haven't uncovered the struggle yet. And then the last two phases, we drop them advice. Like So advice, that's overcoming their solution, overcoming their struggle. And then we make them an offer and that would be for the free offer. And then after that, we do uh, something called collaborative follow-up. So like I follow up, they follow up. We collaboratively work together to follow up with the leads uh, to bring them into high ticket conversations. So that piece of the structure, break the ice, build rapport, uncover the struggle, probe and understand, drop advice, make the offer. That's the cold to, to hot lead process. And it's just a case of people working at that, making it seamless, not making mm. it feel scripted because it's not. There's scripted phrasings in there. There's nothing wrong with scripted phrasings because scripted phrasings like link pieces together and, you know, scripted phrasings help 
provide like the pillars of structure, but like when everything's scripted, it becomes a, just a lack of humanization. So that's the piece that people master. Uh, and once people master that, they bring hot leads into the system. We can convert those people into high ticket. So yeah, hope, hope, hope that answers that all right, man. Yeah, it does, mate. Yeah, so to break that down is like, I'll break the ice. And I'm, I've got a question around that in a minute anyway. Um, so to break the ice, um, find the common ground, um, talk about the common ground in a non goal orientated way. Yeah. Eventually, and um, this is the bit I like, I really like, I'm going to focus on because, like, this is what I say as well as that like, if you talk about the common ground or like that, that, like that section, like, you don't have to ask the struggle question. When you continue that conversation enough, it'll drop out. And that's mm -hmm. them subconsciously telling you it's okay to talk about. Mm -hmm. They're happy for you to talk about that struggle and, and ask that question. Um, mm -hmm. And I always say that, like, obviously, when, when you talk about, like, like you start non-business or, like, you go start common ground, like, common ground, and then you don't move to business effectively until they give you that subconscious permission. Mm -hmm. um, and that means you don't ask the same annoying questions. Hey, seeing you join this group, or hey, like... What's your what's your biggest struggle? What's your what's your goal in the next three months? How? I'm like, yeah. it's like leave me alone. It's yeah. like, I literally had one the other day. He's like, oh, like thanks for joining the group because it was a software that looked looked pretty interesting. I was like, thanks for joining the group. It was like, what's your biggest struggle right now? I was like, listen, mate, I'm a little bit busy. Um, I'm not really interested in appointment set of conversation. Mm. Um, and it just like killed the conversation. I was like, I'm not even going to go back to that group. I'm not even going to look at the software because it's yeah. like, oh, what's your biggest struggle? It's like, yeah, hey, mate, don't yeah, treat yeah. me like everyone else. Yeah. Um, so like that bit is like you've got to as you say you call it unbiased and it's right it's that subconscious permission to mm. move to the next level mm. and then once you've got to that stage it's then obviously you're like probing and, and asking mm. them the right questions as you say like if you if you go through the framework in the right way you'll get to that goal you've just got to be strategic in how you do it without yeah. hey do you want to get laid hey do you want to buy my product hey do you want to book a, <laughs> a strategy call yeah just call it what it is. Um, yeah. So, like, <laughs> for that first bit, now this is the first bit that I want to focus on, like that break the ice. Like, you, me, everybody who joins a Facebook group, etc. like, we'll get bombarded, like, with obviously the first element of this strategy. We'll get, like, a multiple, like, stream of friend requests. We'll get multiple initial conversations obviously some of them we can disqualify straight away because they pitch you straight away some of them ask a bland question uh, some of them find that little common ground like with everybody with appointment setting becoming such a hot thing and um, because it's a repeatable process and a skill you can learn without having to jump on video or build a youtube channel like or, or learn how to write copy it's it's a strong skill set that gets your your business from zero upwards Right. with everybody jumping into appointments and like and people like coming up with the common ground and stuff like how do you stand out like how do you go yeah i'm happy to talk to you but not you not you not you how do you get that success rate from the open conversation because a lot of people are doing it yeah fair. um so like again i i look back to call center right so one i'll tell you one of the clients we used to work for was scottish power so we we're selling mm -hmm. people gas and electric now in the uk um, at the time, there was loads and loads of gas electric companies and like all the data that we'd have to dial was also getting dialed by other companies like on the day, like sometimes six, seven, eight times that getting phoned by multiple different companies Damn. pitching the same thing, right? To see if we can get them a better deal on the gas electric. But we were like literally one of the hottest, um, like Scottish Power had loads of different places in the UK. Um, so we were at points like one of the best in the country uh, for doing what we do. And the reason that we were is not just because of the structure of the conversation, but like the, the humanization of the conversation. Like if for, as a beginning standpoint, your introduction, like your introduction is literally all about breaking the ice. And if your response rate to that is between 30 to 40 percent as a minimum, you will have initial conversations with enough people to ensure like, because I've tested that over a number of years, it's like 30 to 40% response rate, providing you master the structure of the conversation, 
can generate you X amount of money. So like for me, the first point is get that response rate up. The second point after that is how you actually communicate. Because like me just talking about break the ice to build rapport, like that's very like that's high level simplistic. But like if you look at like how to do that, people's issue is they often go question like they often go break the ice in whatever way they do. And then they go question, question, question. Um, in the call center, we had that same problem, right? We, we uh, re recruited people who didn't know anything about sales. And then we were like, okay, this is what you need to cover. This was like years and years and years ago as this framework was put together. And I was like, God, like, there's something wrong here because like people come into the business, they know what they've got to say. And then when they're on an actual phone call with someone, they don't know like how to talk to people. Like they, mm. they don't know, like they just get like flustered. They get like, they choke a little bit. Like they, like they just don't know how it works. So we put something together. I invented something called ARC, which is uh, acknowledge, respond, question. And like online, one of the biggest things that people have is like skepticism and they lack trust for people in these kind of bits. ARC is a great thing to use as a way to form uh, responses. And ARC stands for acknowledge, respond, question. So Acknowledge being any form of positive affirmation back to what someone has said. Nine times out of 10 positive affirmation. So like, awesome, superb, great. I appreciate that. I understand that. Like, like this is great. Thanks for sharing. Like, whatever. Respond or resonate is like the next piece. This is where you can like give maybe a little bit of an opinion on something, share some resonance with someone, have a, a, a thought about what someone else has said. So you make the first two elements of your response actually nothing to do with you and you make it actually all about them based on the, the the common ground you've already found then you move into a more controlling question to advance the conversation which is the, the question and that when people do that well you'll see like people's personality coming out a little bit more you'll see people touching on especially as conversations go on you'll see people like resonating with people in a way where people are like ah like they have that moment where they're like, look, I, I get you. I understand you. You listen to me. You're not just hearing me. You're listening to me. And like, if you look at those basic, basic pieces, which you think like, oh, that's so simple. Listen to people. Show people empathy. Be sincere with people. Be genuine with people. Be real with people. Stop shoving whatever you think is like down their throat that you think they need. Like, it's not about that. It's not about you. It's not about your offer. It's not about what you've done. It's about them. And people's biggest problem online is that they make it about them instead of they make it about their prospects. And ARC is a great way for people to get used to speaking to people online in a way that makes people feel connected to them. And like I said, it's numbers. So it's like, whereas, like, give you an example, right? In the call center, I used to teach this stuff like all day long, but I'd always used to say to my guys, I'd be like, you'd never catch me buying anything over the phone. Like, <laughs> But like, that was just my thing. I, I would definitely do it. I, and I've done it through direct messaging. I'd buy stuff for free direct messaging, but over the phone, I'd never do it. It doesn't change the fact that like my opinion on that doesn't change the fact that the framework and the structure and everything works. So it's like rejection is part of it. If I'm speaking to 30% of the people I have, well, that's kind of saying that 70% of people have ignored me. So what? No different from 100 people uh, seeing your content and only three of them actually engaging with it and, and, and liking it and commenting. Still 97 people who have technically rejected it. Same, mm -hmm. no difference from a whole bunch of emails, like you have 100 people on your email list getting a 17% open rate. Well, that's 83% of people who haven't either seen your subject line because it's in spam or promotion, or like they just don't like it and they don't want to open it. That's rejection. So it's like, that's indirect rejection, but with DMs, people get frustrated initially by like, oh, that's personal rejection. And it's like, mm -hmm. as soon as you can deal with that, as soon as you can just focus on the numbers and like take emotion out of it and stop stop thinking about the outcome and start actually attaching yourself to the process, it's like, well, you'll speak to more people. More people will align with the way that you speak because you're focused more on like building that relationship properly. Remember, zero dollars in the bank. You've got to like be running your business. You've got to have your sales cap on. And like when people focus in that way, it's that's how you would resonate with those people. You won't resonate with everyone. And that's the whole thing. We're not looking for 100 percent. We're looking for enough for you to generate enough hot leads to generate enough hot sales. And if you're starting off at 30 to 40 percent plus on a response rate, it's a phenomenal starting point. 
Mm. Yeah, obviously, fair, fair, as you say, like obviously, you know, obviously, you can get thirty conversations out of a hundred like initial outreaches. It's like thirty conversations. You do that. You do that for one week only. Like obviously, hundred hundred ads a day, thirty, which means you get thirty starts of a conversation. You've got enough conversations to keep you going after a week for a, for a little bit. Yeah, and, and also, man, just to add, like, I'm not even talking about follow up there. Like, so people that you've broken the ice with, people like another trick that people don't do because it might take a little bit extra effort but like remember you're the salesperson in your business and you're on zero dollars in your business you've got to do everything you need to be doing is following up with those people who don't respond back to a break the ice message so we uh again i talk about a call center just one more time not everyone picked up the phone in the call center like people have the answer machine on so it's like okay we either don't ring that number again well, we do ring that number again. So we ran that number again. We'd ring it nine times over three days and we'd get another 20 to 25% contact rate from those people to turn into sales. So same same thing applies. We, we follow up three times to someone who hasn't responded to a break the ice message, three times uh, over three days sequentially. And that will bring your response rate up just through doing that. Uh, and again, extra effort, ma maximum outcome, maximum impact for the outcome, more conversations, more opportunity to practice the structure, the framework, get better at your craft, get better at doing it without feeling like imposter syndrome, without feeling as if you've got to sell someone anything, like make it about them. It's almost like a consultative sale, if that makes sense, man. Mm -hmm. so that was literally going to be my next question I was like uh, obviously because you said follow up nine times obviously when you were calling uh, obviously you probably wouldn't do a follow up nine times on the on the DM so that so each stage if you don't get a response obviously they, they switch off it's like three days a follow up per day and then after that drop them it's it's like that so it's a, I guess a little bit more fluid than that in the sense of like for a break of the ice you can you can afford to be a little bit more aggressive with because the conversation the, the, there's no relationship being built at that point and that the the name of the game is to ignite the conversation if you're midway through a conversation and you've got like more of a i guess you, you're starting to build up that likability and for whatever reason like you know people talk about ghosting like it's like um like they're going to do like a haunted house thing on it like in, in the sense of like people like when you think about it like it's a priority to us, but like to other people, like it's not as much of a priority to begin with. Like mm. to other people, it's like, okay, if they're at work and they've just seen your message, but they haven't messaged back, doesn't mean they're ghosting you. Like if, if they're just about to have a meal, if they're just about to put their little one down, if they're just about to go and watch a film or whatever at the cinema, it don't mean they're ghosting you. Like, so don't take it personally, but like mm. just make sure that you follow up with them. So like, with those people, yeah, it could be three times over three days. Um, depending on the conversation, um, it might be three times over over every other day, like so one and then a miss a day, another. And we normally kind of communicate on that front. Once once someone's become a lead, then yeah, the follow up is persistent. Uh, but again, it's just doing what's right for that person as opposed to what we would do with a break the ice message. Break the ice message is ignite the convo. Later on in the conversation, it's like marinate the relationship, you know. So don't mm. don't uh, don't annoy people, don't frustrate people. Just follow through with the process that that works for that person. So everyone's slightly different, if that makes sense. Yeah, because you get like obviously, don't you? Like the icebreaker, getting that initial response is probably the hardest thing, isn't it? It's like so once you've got through that barrier and you've broke that ice, and like you've got a conversation where they are happy to happy to talk to you. Yeah, you don't want to burn through that because obviously yeah. that is like that's that's tough enough. And um, yeah. so obviously, as you say, like thirty percent to forty percent open like rich contact rate. So like you have to send a hundred messages to get those thirty to forty people. And um, it was like, yeah, you want to protect that relationship a little bit more, and yeah. um, because yeah. obviously it's a stronger relationship. Um, so no, I totally get that. So like, obviously, initial out icebreaker, it's like three follow ups sequentially. So each day, a bit of a follow up just to try and get that response. Once you've responded, then then off you go type scenario. And obviously then yeah. start to treat it as a relationship rather than a stat. Yeah, that's it, man. Exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Like, and what like what other things have you got like in terms of like getting them to that 
a high ticket deal scenario because obviously you say at the moment like when it gets a high ticket deal, like you you sort of like take over and close that deal like how would you get instead of having to get so this is the back end of the conversation so they've gone through the three fit the free thing they're now in that stage of free thing to getting a high ticket sale like what's that process look like yeah, so I mean, like the the free offer is very much uh, connected to the back end high ticket offer. So, like the free offer has an offer at the end anyway. But like the the the, the way I perceive high ticket and free stuff is okay. So the the free offer provides a hell of a lot of information, you know, and it, and I really make sure that that's over delivered with. But like when people purchase for me, like what I think is important is like when people purchasing a high ticket item. It's, it should be to implement. It should be to like help people implement the actual methodology as opposed to just, oh, you get the link like to promote this thing. And it's like, mm. I, I never allow that. Like I have people message me now and then going, oh, can I like just have the link to promote? It's like, no, you can't. Cause like, mm. that's not what this is about. What it's about is like helping you implement this properly so that you're not just another statistic of doing something the wrong way. And that's, so everything's rooted towards the implementation. So the follow-up goes, there's phone call, there's email, there's the offer itself, and there's direct messaging. And like the cool thing with direct messaging is once you have a communication with someone, the most powerful thing is, is that you can talk like, so say for example, Brian, like say, say you were doing, doing it and you bought a lead in, well, like me and you can speak about your lead in terms of like what's going to be the best process to bring that person into a more high ticket based conversation so we've got information to share between each other in terms of like how the conversation went the quality of the lead those elements any little bits that i need to know to help kind of mold my part of the conversation to a high ticket and it's all about working effectively to ensure that that happens similarly some people just flow through the process and i have like google docs and all of that kind of stuff to bring people into me organically through Facebook Messenger. So it's 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 a mix of those two elements. But like the one that I really enjoy is working with who I work with to ensure that we can kind of work together to bring that person into a high ticket combo. Again, that's different from most methodologies. Most methodologies, it's you've got an like it's one way marketing. You know, it's very much like, okay, I bring them onto my list and I send emails out. Yeah, you might get a few replies, but it's like, it's one way marketing, direct messaging, it's very communicative. And that should also occur between the person who got the link, uh, sorry, get, got the lead, as well as the person selling the high ticket. So that's how we work it about. Again, quite fluid, like people either come to me through Google Docs, through the back end of the free offer, through phone call, or like not reaching out on a sales call, but like through the phone call element or through direct messaging. So it's kind of four different touch points, I would say, man, or even content. So four or five different touch points. All right. Okay. Sound. So obviously they've gone through the, the free date, not the free, the free challenge, which we'll talk about in a minute anyway. Um, then at the end of the free challenge, there's obviously like, Hey, do you need more? Do you need more help? This is how you can get it. And obviously there's an offer there. Um, which, and then from there, it's a case of managing that process and going, Hey, like, you're on the email list, here's some more value, here's some extra things that you need or could like deal with. Or and obviously, like you've obviously they've took the free offer, so that that's their admission that they need that help. And um, yeah. so you know they need that help. So it's not a case of trying to just sell someone. It's like, well, you took the free offer because you know you need help. So I'm trying to save you in a more appropriate way. And um, mm. so it's like free offer, and then obviously the there's a, a an opportunity to work with you in greater detail at the end of that. Um, then obviously there's like right DMs, emails, and potentially do you said potentially phone calls as well. Obviously through the hey, like is there anything you need? How can I help? Da, 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 da. What did you think about the offer, etc.? Like how can I get you to the next stage? Um, so that's is that basically that's the back end to the first phase, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, okay. So now what I do want to talk about quickly is obviously before we we disappear is that challenge of yours that like that free challenge obviously to help people with appointment setting and like that type of thing because it's crucial in today's world it is 100 needed tell me a little bit more about that challenge and it, where they can find it yeah cool uh so yeah i think we've got a link 
down below have we have we got yeah we have yeah yeah sweet so yeah there's a link down below um but basically it's a five-day challenge and it's cold to high ticket messenger challenge it's going to help you understand how to generate thousand dollar plus commissions using the power and the art of communication and direct messaging um there is a a, a cheeky little extra pre-challenge video as well which runs over the current state of high ticket affiliate marketing which runs over some of the bits that me and Brian touched on at the beginning where I was talking about kind of content and, you know, what what people are kind of told to focus on first and foremost in this industry. Um, again, nothing against content, right? I just do believe like the way in which people approach their business is very passive and relaxed and chilled and just put it out there and waiting for stuff to happen. And it just baffles my mind. as to yeah, There's two phases and there's Hunt and Farm. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. And, and like the cool thing with like direct messages, like when we get pretty cool results, like then we start creating some sizzle content, like to start building out the, you know, their reputation and their brand whilst still doing direct messaging. But yeah, in, in the challenge, we run for everything. So current state of high for ticket affiliate marketing, the actual system uh, that I just spoke about kind of earlier, we run through actually creating targeted prospects. So a lot of, uh, again, a, a lot of, people talk about oh, like how do I find hot leads how do I find hot prospects like they're waiting for you to like just fall onto their lap regardless of who they're speaking to it's like oh here they all are they're in this group and you just need to like just connect with them and you're going to make loads of money it's, it's not about that I, I, I believe we create hot leads you know and that should be due to the relationship that we build with people what what someone is is a freebie seeker to someone else is a high ticket customer to the other person and the only difference there is the communication and the relationship that they've built. So I focused that uh, on one of the days. I do believe that's going to probably be day two. Day three, we run through all of the structure, the framework, the five-step DM framework. Uh, day four, we run through some sizzle content. I give uh, my honest, unfiltered thoughts on, on content as a whole. Like I said, still do like content, uh, but I'm just <laughs> saying that, that, that piece. And then day five... We run through the pathway to generating 10k uh, with direct messaging. Uh, but yeah, links below between four to six hours. Don't click on the link if you ain't going to take action on it. Like, <laughs> don't, don't, don't base it on an impulse. Like, if you're watching this, don't base it on an impulse. Like, it doesn't matter. Do it if you want to learn this and you want to take it seriously and do it properly. That's all that matters, really. Uh, otherwise, just going to be something else you sign up to. You get a whole bunch of emails that uh, you don't want to receive. I don't want to send them to you if you're not going to take action. So take action, do the right thing. Take action if you want to take action. Drop the uh, the links below. And uh, yeah, that's it. Do you know what, James? Thank you so much for that. Obviously, I've enjoyed the conversation because it's a different element and it's stuff I know about. It's just sometimes I don't take action just as like, as obviously like most, because I said, didn't I? I was like, I, I hate appointment setting, but I definitely see the relevance and where it is and how important it is to business. Um, so guys, if you are like, if you are at zero or you are at a low income within your journey right now, then this challenge is possibly the only thing you actually need to think about um, and actually implement because you do, if you're hungry, what you do, you go hunt. Okay. And that is what this is all about. It's about hunting and getting those results. Okay. Once you're a little bit full, you start to plant some seeds and, like, and do that farming. But if you ain't full, you are literally going to think about food and that is what this is about go and get your food go and get that cash go and get those sales so definitely go and learn how to do it it's one of the key key things in online marketing and that is never going to go away so it's a skill for life so go check the youtube description james thank you so much i appreciate you and um just thanks for bringing it mate i love it yeah thanks dude really appreciate it brian awesome awesome what you're doing man so uh yeah, all the best, dude. <laughs> Cheers, pal.